The rise of zombies in movies and TV shows, well, pretty much everywhere in pop culture, has led many to believe that a zombie apocalypse could actually happen. So what if the day came when there was a showdown with the undead? Where would you go? What would you do? And what's your game plan for survival? But even more importantly, is there even a chance that we could survive? The following video uses a popular fictional cultural phenomenon, zombies. In order to illustrate real life modern epidemiological tools drawn from statistical mechanics, computational chemistry, and mathematical modeling for educational purposes only. The Department of Energy and Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory do not fund or perform research on zombies or zombie outbreaks. Believe it or not, there is actually a science behind a zombie apocalypse that could help you determine the safest places to go and what your odds of even surviving would be. Based off the common statistical SIR model, which is often used to describe the spread of an infectious disease, Cornell University researchers came up with a similar model to help demonstrate what a realistic zombie outbreak would look like. So you may be wondering why a national lab would be studying zombies. Well, the easy answer to that is we're not. The SIR model and other statistical modeling is actually used here at the lab for much more serious work on infectious diseases. But Cornell University found that using the fictional disease of zombies was an effective way to introduce statistical mechanics and techniques. But in order to get an even better understanding of all this zombie madness, I'm turning to two of our very own statisticians here at the lab to help give us a little more perspective on the statistical mechanics of zombies. So they modified the traditional model into something that they call SZR for susceptible, again, normal humans who are not infected with zombism. Z obviously stands for zombie, people who are capable of infected others and turning them into zombies. And finally, removed, because unfortunately there isn't really a, a recovery state for a zombie outbreak. The SZR model is used because it has realistic values that can help researchers look at an outbreak on a national scale level. For example, national labs like us can actually perform research uh, in, at, in the beginning of the outbreak to look at things like vaccine development or developing a cure or or, or even developing diagnostic tests to tell if someone's been bitten by a zombie or not. Did he just say what I think he said? Obviously zombies are fictional and you won't really be bitten by one, but those other things that pertain to an infectious disease like performing research at the beginning of an outbreak, vaccine development, and figuring out a cure are all used for real life scenarios. So now that we know the basis of this statistical model for a zombie outbreak, would this also help us predict whether the outbreak can be contained or not? I like to call that the zombie effectiveness ratio. And it's basically the ratio of the rate that humans can neutralize zombies to the rate at which zombies can bite humans. So if that ratio is less than one, if zombies are biting people faster than people are neutralizing zombies, then unfortunately, the SDR model predicts that all humans will eventually be zombified. If the, if the ratio is greater than one, then the outbreak's going to be ultimately contained. Sounds simple, right? The second part of this model, or the first enhancement of this model, is actually accounting for the individual zombie-human battles, which is really, really critical, as I mentioned, in the early stages of the outbreak. And this allows them to predict that even this super-critical zombie outbreak, which has the ratio less than one, has some chance of, of being exterminated, of not leading to ultimate human extinction. Training yourself to be a top-notch zombie neutralizer is not your only ticket to survival. Location is also a huge factor to surviving when zombies start crawling out of their graves. The researchers in this case actually uh, developed a simulation model where they, they implemented the, the, the SDR model on a computer and ran, ran many, many simulations. Computer simulations similar to the one used for a zombie outbreak are models that can also be adapted for real world diseases like the flu and Ebola to help determine the outcome of an infectious outbreak. They started each simulation in a different city and, and let it, the, the outbreak go on for 28 days. The lighter regions are areas where there's, after 28 days, 
high concentration of <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Stop playing around, guys. It's not funny. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, so the, the lighter areas have a high concentration of zombies. And uh, the, the darker areas are areas where after 28 days there are no or very little zombies. Um, so someone living in the San Francisco Bay Area, for example, um, it would be beneficial for them to escape to Nevada, or even a month into the outbreak, there's very few zombies there. All this zombie talk can sound pretty alarming now that it's been put in actual real world context, right? Don't worry, the undead have not risen from their graves to devour the living. But there was a time when we said man couldn't walk on the moon, and look what happened there. Ah!